In the previous video, I said we'd hear some noise in this video. I lied. I decided that because we have already learned about input and how to make that input control a max patch, we should learn how to create output from the max patch that controls the control R LEDs. Then we'll be armed with a solid foundation and then we can make some noise. Let's take a look at a pretty simple patch that explains the basics of LED control as well as a few other tricks. First, let's select the control R port. This will set the port for all the many objects in the patch. Lighting LEDs for buttons is really easy. You just send nodes to the control R to turn them on and use velocity to determine the color. Patch-wise, all I need is a node out to send MIDI and a couple of number boxes. I've made a handy menu to make it easy to choose the colors since it can be hard to remember which velocity is which color. The button LEDs can also be controlled with SysX. This is a somewhat advanced thing to do, but you should know it is possible, and I've detailed how to do it in this patch. When you want to control the LED rings, there's a couple of ways of doing this. It might seem a bit weird at first, but when you need this feature, you'll be really glad it's there. The obvious thing to do is send the control R, the CC that the encoder sends out. This one sends out 48, so I'll use 48 to control the ring. This also updates the encoder value. Notice that now when I turn the encoder, it doesn't start from where I last turned it, but from where the LED ring is. If I sent it the CC number plus 32, in this case CC100, I'm controlling the LED ring only and not the value. See what happens now. When I turn the ring, the value starts from where I last turned it. This is good if you want to decouple the LED rings from the encoder for some other display use. For example, over here I use the ring as a loop indicator and I use the encoder value to change speed. That's about all you need to know about controlling LEDs. There's a couple of other interesting things that I put in this patch that are unique features of the control R that you might need for your own patch. The settings channel is channel 16. On this channel, you can send values to controllers not to change their values, but their settings. I can change the speed of the encoder. I can change how an LED ring draws. There's several modes. I can change local control, which means LEDs respond to your touches without any MIDI data sent to the control R. Now we have a pretty solid foundation. Let's put it all together. I've broken out the two rows of 16 buttons from my UI patch that we did in the second video. I can click on the buttons and make things happen on the screen, but we want the control R to mirror this information on its LEDs. I've also got this runner LED up here that indicates time, as you might want to do on a step sequencer. I'm controlling this runner with the patch on the left using a simple script to the this patcher object, turning the buttons on and off in succession. Each runner LED is named, so I can do this really easily. The trick here is that on the control R, I'm going to merge this runner with the top row to indicate time. I'll need to turn on an LED so it's red, then return the LED to its previous color, whether it was off or blue. I update the control R in frames, like a video. I get a snapshot of my patch's UI every 100 milliseconds, then send all of the relevant data to light LEDs. We'll use the auto pattern object to dump out all the current states of the UI objects so we know what the previous color was. Take a look with print. We can see what happens when I bang get state. We get everything. We then send all that data through some calls that translate the UI names into note values and also provide some color maps for on off states for each LED. Let's see what happens when I send a sample message through this patch. It's broken into name and value and the color list comes out here. The color for on or off is filtered here so we get the right state. And finally, we get a note velocity pair that goes out to the control R. As you can see, this happens very fast, and when all the UI is updated at once, we get a really large chord. We also use the clock to drive the runner LED. The clock fetches a button value from buttons now, turns that LED red with the right note. That action is delayed a 16th note so we can return the LED to the previous state. Knowledge that we retrieved from the buttons now call. All that is also sent as notes to the control R. So in the end, by intelligently naming our UI elements in the original control R to UI patch, we can now turn those definitions around back into MIDI notes. With a few more strategic translations with call, we have a pretty tidy patch that performs a really important task. 
So I'll make another promise. In the next video, we'll really put everything together and actually make some music.